Hi guys, today is the 10th of February 2021. Today I'm going to read 2 Chronicles 35 to 36, Proverbs, uh, Ezra 1 to 3, Proverbs, Proverbs 10, and Psalm 43. Let's get started. Mm. Joshua celebrated the Passover feast in Jerusalem to honor the Lord. The Passover lamb was killed on the 14th day of the first month. Josiah appointed the priests to their duties. He cheered them up as they served the Lord as his temple. The Levites taught all the people of Israel. The Levites had been set apart until the Lord. Josiah said to them, Put the sacred ark of the covenant in the temple west, in the temple Solomon built. And he was the son of David and king of Israel. The ark must not be carried around on your shoulders. Serve the Lord your God. Serve his people Israel. Prepare yourselves by families and your groups. Do it based on the directions written by David, the king of Israel, and by his son Solomon. Stand at the temple. Stand there with a group of Levites and for each group of families among your people. Go to the past of your land. Set yourselves apart to the Lord. Prepare the lands for your people. Do what the Lord commanded through Moses. And Joshua provided animals for the Passover offerings. He gave them for all the people who were there. He gave a total of 30,000 lambs and goats and 3,000 oxen. He gave all of them from his own, from his own possessions. His officials also gave for him. They gave to the people and the priests and Levi. And Levi, Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehu were in charge of God's temple. They gave the priests 2,600 Passover lambs and 300 oxen. Conania and his brother Shimei and Nathanael also gave offerings. So did Hashabiah, Jehu, Jehu, and Josabeth. All of them were the leaders of the Levites. They gave 5,000 Passover lambs and 500 oxen for the Levites. The Passover service was arranged. The priests stood in their places. The Levites were in their groups. That's what the king had ordered. <clears throat> the Passover lambs were killed. The priests smashed against the altar, the blood handed to them. Yeah, the Levites skinned the animals. They set the burnt offerings to one side. His offerings were for the smaller family groups to offer to the Lord. That's what the was written in the book of Moses. The Levites did the same thing with the oxen. <clears throat> they took the Passover animals over the fire, just as the Lord required. They boiled the holy offerings in pots, large curls, and pans. They served the offerings quickly to all the people. After that, they got things ready for themselves and the priests. That's because the priests, who were from the family line of Aaron, were busy until dark. They were sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fat parts. The Levites got up. <clears throat> things ready for themselves and for the priests who belonged to Aaron's family line. Those who pre played music were from the family line of Asaph. They were in the places that had been served by David, Asaph, Heman, and Jedithan. <coughs> <coughs> Jedithan had been the king's prophet. The guards at each gate didn't have to leave their places. That's because their brother, Levi, got things ready for them. So at that time, the entire service saw on them. The Lord was carried out. The Passover feast was celebrated. The burnt offerings were sacrificed on the Lord's altar. That's what King Josiah had ordered. The Israelites were there celebrate the Passover feast. At that time, <coughs> they observed the feast of unleavened bread for seven days. The Passover feast had been observed like that in Israel since the days of Samuel the prophet. None of the kings of Israel had ever created a Passover feast like Josiah. He celebrated it. <coughs> <clears throat> the priests and Levites. All the people of Judah and Israel were there along with the people of Jerusalem. He celebrated it with them too. The pa that Passover feast was celebrated in the 18th year of Josiah's rule. Josiah had put the temple in order. After that, <coughs> Nature went up to fight against Carchemish. <coughs> I was king of Egypt. Carchemish was on the Euphrates River. Josiah marched out to meet Nietzsche and Mel. Then Nietzsche sent messengers to him. They said, Josiah, King of Judah, there is no trouble between you and me. I'm not taking you at this time. I'm at war with another country. God told me to hurry. He's with me. So stop opposing him. If you don't, he'll destroy you. But Josiah wouldn't turn away from Nietzsche. Josiah wore different clothes so people wouldn't recognize him. He wanted to go to war against Nietzsche. He wouldn't listen to what God had commanded Nietzsche to say. 
Instead, Josiah went out to fight on him on the plains of Megiddo. Men who had very short arrows at King Josiah. After he was hit, he told his officers, Take me away. I'm badly wounded. So they took him out of his chair. They put him in his other chariot. They brought him to Jerusalem. There he died. He was buried in the tomb of his family. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem went for him. Jeremiah wrote songs for sadness about Josiah. To this day, all the male and female singers remember Josiah by singing their songs. They became a practice in Israel. Those <clears throat> the songs are written down in the book of the, of the songs of sadness. <laughs> Josiah did many things that showed he was faithful to them. Those things and the other events of Josiah's rule were keeping, were in keeping with what is written from beginning to end. Or with what is written in the law of the Lord. All the events from beginning to end are written down. They are written in the records of the kings of Israel and Judah. The people of the land got went and got Jehoahaz. He was the son of Josiah. The people made Jehoahaz king in Jerusalem in the place of his father. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king. He was in Jerusalem for three months. The king of Egypt removed him from his throne in Jerusalem. The king of Egypt made the people of Judah pay him huge tax. The tax was almost four tons of silver and 75 pounds of gold. Necho, the king of Egypt, made Eliakim king over Judah and Jerusalem. Eliakim was a brother of Jehoahaz. Necho changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim, but Necho took Eliakim's brother Jehoahaz with him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king. He was in Jerusalem for 11 years. <clears throat> he did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord and his God. Nebuchadnezzar attacked him. Nebuchadnezzar was king of Finn. He put Jehoiakim in bronze chains and he took him to Babel. Nebuchadnezzar also took to Babel and objects from the Lord's temple. He put them in his own temple there. The other events of Jehoiakim's rule are written in the records of the kings of Israel and Judah. He did things the Lord hates. The Lord hated. Those things are and everything that happened to him are also written in those records. Jehoiakim's son, Jonah, Jehoiachin, became the next king after Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for three months and ten days. He did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. In the spring, King Nebuchadnezzar was sent for him. He brought him to Babylon. He also brought things of value to from the Lord's temple. He made Zedekiah king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was Jehoiachin's uncle. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king. He ruled in Jerusalem for 11 years. And he did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. But he didn't pay any attention to the message the Lord spoke through Jeremiah the prophet. So he also refused to remain under the control of King Nebuchadnezzar. The king had forced Zedekiah to make a promise in God's name. But Zedekiah's heart became very strong. He wouldn't turn to the Lord, the God of Israel. And that's not all. The people and all the leaders of the priests became more and more faithful. They followed all the practices of the nations. The Lord hated those practices. The people and leaders made the Lord's temple unclean. The Lord has set the temple in Jerusalem apart in a special way for himself. The Lord, the God of Israel, sent word to his people through his messengers. He sent it to him again and again. He took pity on his people. He also took pity on the temple where he lived. But God's people made fun of his messengers. They hated his words. They laughed at his prophets. Finally, the Lord's great anger was stirred up against his people. Nothing could save him. The Lord brought the king of the Babylonians against them. The Babylonian army killed their young people with their swords at the temple. They didn't spare young men or young women. They didn't spare the old people or weak people either. God handed all of them over to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar carried off to Babylon all the objects from God's temple. Some of those things were large, others were small. He carried off the treasures of the temple. He also carried off the treasures that belonged to the king and his officials. The Babylonians set God's temple on fire. They broke down the wall of Jerusalem. They burned all of the places, houses. They destroyed everything of value there. The butcher and Nazar took the rest of the people to Babylon as prisoners. They had escaped from being killed by swords. They served him and those who ruled after him. They lost. That lasted until the king of Persia came to power. The land of Israel enjoyed its Sabbath years. It rested. That deserted land was a farm for a full seventy years. When the Lord had spoken to Jeremiah, it came true. It was the first year of the rule of Cyrus. It was, he was the king of Persia. The Lord inspired him to send a message over his king. It happened so that what the Lord had spoken through Jeremiah would come true. The message was written down. It said, Cyrus the king of Persia says, The Lord is the God of heaven, and he has given me all the kingdoms on earth. 
He has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem and Jude. And all of his people along, among you may go up to Jerusalem. And may the Lord their God be with them. Ezra 1 to 3. It was the first year of the rule of Cyrus, and was the king of Persia. The Lord inspired him to send a message all through his kingdom. <clears throat> it happened so that what the Lord had spoken through Jeremiah would come true. The message was written down. It said, Cyrus the king of Persia says, The Lord is the God of heaven. He has given me all the kingdoms on earth. He has appointed me to build a temple for him at Judah. Jerusalem and Jude. I knew his people among you may go up to Jerusalem and build the Lord's temple. He is the God of Israel. He is the, the God who is in Jerusalem. And may their God be with them. <laughs> there are people still left alive in every place the uh, must bring gifts to the people going. They must provide silver and gold to the people uh, going up to Jerusalem. The people must bring goods and livestock. They should also bring any offerings they choose to. All those gifts will be for God's temple in Jerusalem. Then everyone got an inspired prayer to go. They wanted to go up to Jerusalem and build the Lord's temple. They included the family leaders of Judah and Benjamin. They also included the priests and the neighbors. All their neighbors helped them. They gave them silver and gold objects. They gave them goods and livestock. And they gave them gifts of great value. All these things were added to the other offerings the people chose to give. King Cyrus also brought out the objects that belonged to the Lord's temple. Nebuchadnezzar had carried them off from Jerusalem. He put them in the temple of his own God. Cyrus the king of Persia told Mithridath to bring them out. Mithridath was in charge of the temple treasures. He counted those objects. Then he gave them to Sheshbazzar, the prince of Jew. Here's a list of the objects. There were three thirty gold dishes. There were 1,000 silver dishes. There were 29 silver pants. There were 30 gold bowls. There were 410 matching silver bowls. There were 1,000 other objects. The total number of gold and silver objects was 5,400. Shesh Baza brought all, these, all of these back with them to Jerusalem. So Shesh Baza and the Jews who had been forced to leave Judea came up from Babylon to Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar had taken many Jews away from the land of Jews. He had forced them to go to Babylon as prisoners. Now they returned to <coughs> Jerusalem and Judah. <coughs> now all of them went back to their town. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. The leaders of the Jews included Zerubbabel, Joshua, Nehemiah, Sarai, and Reuel. They also included Mordecai, Bilshan, Mizpah, Big Fry, Re- Rahum and Dan. Here's a list of the men of Israel who returned home. There were 2,172 from the family line of Parish. There were 372 from Shephatia. There were 775 from Aaron. There were 2,812 from Pahath Moab to the family line of Jeshua and Joah. There were 1,254 from Noah. There were 945 from Zatu. There were 760 from Zaphi. There were 642 from Ban. There were 623 from Bubai. There were 1,222 from Asgai. There were 666 from Adoni Camp. There were 2,056 from Big Y. There were 454 from Aden. There were 98 from Ata through the family line of Hezekiah. There were 323 from Bezai. There were 112 from Jor. There were 223 from Hashem. There were 95 from Gibba. There were 123 from the men of Bethlehem. There were 56 from Nehemiah. There were 128 from Anathoth. There were 42 from Asbabus. There were 743 from Kirishim, and Beulah. There were 621 from Ramah and Geba. There were 122 from Mikmah. There were 122 from Mikmash. There were 223 from Beth and I. There were 53 from Nebo. There were 156 from Magbish. Magbish. There were 100, 1,254 from the other outline. There were 320 from Harem. There were 725 from Lord, Hadid, and Ernie. There were 345 from Jericho. There were three. 3,600 from Senna. Here's the list of the priests. There were 973 from the family line of Judea through the line of Jeshua. There were 1,053 from Em. There were 1,247 from Pasha. There were 1,017 from Haran. 
It is a list of the Levites. There are seventy four from the family lines of Jeshua and Cadmiel. Cadmiel was the line was from the line of Hadabia. Here is a list of the musicians. There are one hundred and twenty eight from the family line of Asa. Here is a list of the men who got the temple gate. There are one hundred and twenty nine from the family lines of Shalom, Asa, Talman, Akab, Hatita, and Shiva. Here is a list of the members of the family lines of the temple service. Ziha, Hashafa, Tabal, Keros, Yaha, Paddin, Labana, Hagaba, Akab, Hagab, Hagab, Shalmai, Hanan, Gidel, Gaha, Rea, Rezin, Nikoda, Gaza, Uzza, Pasea, Besai, Asma, Mianim, Nephesim, Bakbak, Hakafa, Haha, Basla, Mehida, Hasha, Barkos, Sisera, Tima, Nehia, Nezia, Hatifa. Here's a list of the members of the family lines of the Sons of Solomon. Sotai, Hasipura, Peruna, <coughs> Peruna, Jala, Darkin, Gido, Shephatia, Hatil, Pokereth, Hazabim, Ami. The total number of the members of the family lines of the Temple Servants and the Sons of Solomon was 392. Many people came up to Judah from the towns of Tel Meh. Mela, Tel Hashad, Kerab, Abdin, Adin, and Emma, but they weren't able to prove that their families belonged to the people of Israel. There were 652 of them from the family lines of Delea, Tobia, and Nikoda. Here's a list of the members of the family lines of the priests. There were Hubeya, Hubaya, Hakaz, and Barzillai. Barzillai had married the daughter of Barzillai from Gilead, so he was also called Barzillai. The priests also looked for their family. The priests looked for their family records, but they couldn't find them, so they weren't able to serve as priests. They were unclean. The governor gave them an order. He told them not to eat any of the most sacred fruit. They had to wait until there was a priest who could use the Urim and Thummim. The priest would use them to find out what the Lord wanted the people to do. The total number of the entire group that returned was 42,360. That didn't include their 7,307 male and female slaves. There were also 200 male and female singers, and there were 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. All the people arrived at the place in Jerusalem where the Lord's temple would be rebuilt. Then some of the leaders of the family for offerings they chose to give. They would be they would be used for rebuilding the house of God. They would stand in the same place it had been before. The people gave money for the work. It was based on how much they had. They gave one thousand one hundred pounds of gold. And they also gave three tons of silver. And they gave one hundred sets of clothes for the priests. All of that was added to the temple church. Priests and Levites made their homes in their own town. So did the musicians, the men who guarded the gates, and the temple servants. But the rest of the Israelites also made their homes in their own towns. The, pe- the Israelites had made their homes in their towns. In the seventh month, all of them gathered together in Jerusalem. Then Joshua began to began to build the altar for burnt offerings to honor the God of Israel. Joshua was the son of Josedah. The other priests helped Joshua. So did Suri, Babel, and his men. They built the altar according to what is written in the law of Moses. Moses was the man of God. Suri, Babel, was the son of Sheltiel. The people who built the altar were afraid of the nations around them, but they built it anyway. They set it up where it had stood before. They sacrificed burnt offering on it to the Lord. They offered the morning and evening sacrifices on it. Then they celebrated the Feast of Booths. They did it according to what is written in the law. They sacrificed the number of burnt offerings required for each day. And then after they celebrated the Feast of Booths, they sacrificed the regular burnt offerings. They offered the new moon sacrifices. They also offered the sacrifices for all the appointed feasts all the appointed fe- sacred feasts of the Lord, and they sacrificed the offerings the people chose to give them. And on the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer a burnt offerings to the Lord. They did it even though the foundation of the Lord's temple had been laid yet. The people gave money to those who worked with stone and those who worked with wood. They gave food and drink and olive oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre. Then those people brought their logs down to down from Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea. They floated them down to Joppa. Cyrus, the king of Persia, authorized to do, authorized them to do. It. it was the second month of the second year after they had arrived at the house of God in Jerusalem. Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, began the work. Joshua, the son of Josedek, helped him. So did everyone else. That had included the priests and Levites. It also included the rest of those who had returned to Jerusalem. They had been prisoners in the land 
Jordan Bain. He writes, we were 20 years old and we were appointed to be in charge of building the Lord's house. Those who joined together to direct the work included Joshua and his sons and brothers. They used to include Cadmiel and his sons. They included the sons of Hanadad and their sons and brothers. All these men were Levites. Cadmiel and his sons were members of the family line of Hadabia, the son. The builders laid the foundation of the Lord's temple. Then the priests came. They were wearing their special clothes. They brought the trumpets with them. The Levites who belonged to the family line of Asaph was the king. They brought their symbols with them. The priests and Levites took their places to praise the Lord. They did everything just as King David had required them to. They sang to the Lord. They praised him. They gave thanks to him. They said, The Lord is good. His faithful love to Israel continued for it. All the people gave a loud shout. They praised the Lord. They were glad because the foundation of the Lord's temple had been laid. But many of our older priests and Levites and family leaders wept at night. They had seen the first temple. So when they saw the foundation of the second temple being laid, they shouted with joy. They wept. Others shouted with joy. No one could tell the difference between the shouts of joy and the sounds of weeping. That's because the people made so much noise. Sound was heard far away. Proverbs 10. These are the problems of Solomon. A wise son makes his father cry, but a foolish son brings sorrow to his mother. Riches that are gained by sinning bring Riches that are gained by sinning are worth very um, worth anything. But doing what is righteous, right saves you from death. The Lord gives those who do right the food they eat, but he lets those who do wrong go hungry. Hands that don't want to work make you poor, but hands that work hard bring wealth to you. A child who gathers crops in summer is lost, but a child who sleeps at harvest time brings shame. But like slings are like crowns on the heads of those who do right. That the trouble caused by what sinners say destroys them. The names of those who do right are used in blessing, but the names of those who do wrong will rot. A wise heart accepts commands, but the fool. But fools try and destroy it. Anyone who lives without blame will save me. Now anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. An evil one gets you into trouble. But in the fool's try and destroy it. But the mass of those who do right for it like a fountain. But the mass of sins hide evil, their evil plan. Hate stirs up light. But love erases all sins by forgiving them. Wisdom is found on the lips of those who understand what is right. But those who have no sense of punishment. Wise people store up knowledge. <clears throat> but the mass of foolish people destroy it. The wealth of rich people. The wealth of rich people is like a sea that makes them feel safe. But having nothing destroys their soul. People who do what is right and lie. The sins and sin and death. Anyone who pays attention to correction shows the path to life. But anyone who refuses to be corrected leads others down the wrong path. Anyone who hides hatred with lying lips and spreads lies is foolish. Sin is not ended by using many words. And that those who are wise control their tongue. The tongues of those who do right are like fine silver. But the hearts of those who do wrong are almost very much. The words of those who do right benefit many people, but those who are foolish die because they have no sense. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, and it comes without painful way. A foolish person finds pleasure in evil plans, but a person who is understanding takes delight in wisdom. Uh, what sins are afraid of will catch up with them, but those who do right will get what they want. When the storm is over, sins are gone, but those who do right stand firm forever. Those who don't want to work hurt those who sin. They like vinegar on the teeth or smoke in the eyes. And when respect for the Lord leads to a long and the life. But the years of evil people are cut short. Those who do right can expect joy. But the hopes of sins are bound to fail. The way of the Lord is a safe place for those without way. But that way destroys those who do evil. Those who do right will never be removed from the Lord. But those who do wrong will not remain there. The mass of those who do right produce wisdom. The tongues that speak twisted words will be made sound. Those who do right know the proper thing to say. But those who do wrong speak only twisted words. The Lord hates it when the people use against which he loves, but he is delighted when he reads on his ways. Proverbs, Psalm 43. My God, when you hand out your decision, let it be in my favor. Say, Stand up for me against an unfaithful nation. Save me from those lying and sinful people. You are my God. You are my, you are God, my place of shame. Why have you turned your back on me? Why must I go around in sorrow? I know I might be in death by my enemies. Send me your light and faithful, and your faithful care, and let them lead me. Let them bring me back to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. Then I will go to the altar of God. I will go to God. He is my joy and my delight. God, you are my God. I will praise you by playing the lie. My spirit, why are you so sad? Why are you so upset? Do you dare Put your hope in God. 
Once again, I will have reason to praise him. He is my saviour and my God. Now that's done, I shall now give the Lord's prayer. Please pray ahead. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you wish to begin our debts. There is none into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.